Hello everyone, what do you do before you begin a flight to a brand new airport that you've never been to? Hello everyone and welcome back to J1 Aviation. So today the scenario training that we're talking about is flying to a brand new airport. So let's say your friend wants to fly to this new airport which you have never been to. What do you do? Do you do anything? Do you just take off, point your nose in the direction of that airport and figure it out on four flight as you go? Or in your mind, do you have some things that you kind of work through as like a checklist before you begin the flight? And then when you begin the flight, you are prepared for the flight. So I hope it's more the latter. So one of the first things that I like to do is grab your iPad, go on four flight or whatever you use, look at the VFR sectional overlay, and look at the airspace you're gonna be flying through as you go to your new destination, right? Are there any big restricted areas that are gonna require you like a big deviation around, right? Is there any high density traffic areas, you know, class B, class C, anything like that you need to be aware of? And then, you know, look at your destination, look around the destination, see if there's anything interesting there. And if you don't have your iPad with you, you can go on a computer, right, to the website vfrmap.com. And that's an online sectional. And then on that sectional, you can see a lot of those same details there. Now, a good practice, and I like to do it, is to write things down on the flight that you'll need, right? That way you have it handy there. And there's nothing worse than being in flight, coming up to an airport, scrambling for, you know, the traffic pattern altitude you need to be at, trying to find the frequency you need to be at. It, it's good practice to have all of that stuff prepared. And then, you know, you have all the runways down, you kind of have some basic information about the airport. And then when you get closer, you can also think about, you know, based on how you're approaching the airport, if it's a towered airport, how ATC will set you up for the approach, right? Will you be entering on a downwind? Are you coming straight in? Will it be a final straight in approach to the runway? Will it be like some sort of base or some combination thereof? So these are the things you wanna be thinking about then as you're getting closer to the airport. And then also when you're getting closer, if it's a towered airport, you wanna pick up ATIS with lots of time to spare, right? Because then you can start getting a picture of the activity at the airport, of other aircraft calling in, and you can get a picture of what ATC is telling the other aircraft to do so you kind of know what to expect when it's your turn to talk to ATC. And it just helps you be a little bit more prepared overall. And then, you know, after you touch down, so what's the next step? Are you just doing a touch and go and then, you know, departing back to your home airport? Or will you be parking at the FBO? You know, if you're gonna be parking, you definitely wanna review the taxi diagram. You wanna have maybe a mental picture. Okay, we're gonna take this taxi away and then we're gonna do this. That's most likely what we're gonna do. We're gonna be prepared for it, we can brief it. And then you're more prepared. Again, preparation is key. <laughs> you wanna be as prepared as possible. And it never hurts to call the FBO ahead of time. If you're parking at an FBO, they can give you some you know, up-to-date information, which maybe you can't find anywhere. They can give you something to expect with, or something they might expect of you. So it never hurts to call the FBO. Now, if you really wanted to deep dive into getting familiar with the airport, right, there's online, you know, live ATC, which you can listen to for a lot of airports. You can get a feel of the communication, the flow of the traffic, so that might be helpful. And don't be afraid to tell ATC that, hey, this is my first time flying in here. I might need a little extra help and assistance. You know, there's never any shame in asking for that. So that's mainly focused around towered airports. So let's talk about non-towered airports if you're going to one of those. Now for me, I would say the biggest challenge for non-towered airports is finding the airport to begin with, especially grass strips. You know, the runway's smaller, the airport footprint is smaller, they don't have as much surrounding infrastructure to be able to just spot the airport from, you know, five or more miles out. And sometimes, <clears throat> you know, just finding it can be a challenge. So sometimes, you know, I'm looking at my iPad and I'm like flying, I'm like zoomed in, I'm like the airport's like literally right there and I don't see it. So I just point my nose in the direction of the airport, fly over the airport just to get like a lay of the land of the airport. You could see the runways, the taxiways. Sometimes that's almost how you have to find some of these small airports, especially the grass strips. Now, if you're flying over the airport, make sure you fly over at least a thousand feet above traffic pattern altitude. That way there's plenty of, you know, separation between you and the other traffic that would be in the area. 
And then also for these little airports, you know, you can use Google Earth to help find the airport, right? So instead of just trying to figure it out based on the sectional, you can overlay Google Earth and be like, okay, so the airport is there. Um, it's on the other side of these buildings. I go up, follow up the road and, and there's the airport, right? So that can help a little bit. Now, another idea, and I'm not really into flight sim games, but some people are, and I've heard some people actually doing their flight on the sim prior to flying the actual flight and then that can really help them right get a comfort level get a feeling for how the flight's going to go and another big thing you know hey you're already on youtube there's lots of youtube videos about people flying into different airports right so if you watch them i mean that can probably be helpful as well so that's a few things that come to mind for me when i think about flying to a new airport so i'm interested to hear anything else that you guys can think of anything that comes up which you might check so thanks everyone for watching today. We'll hope you join us on a future flight and thanks for flying J1 Aviation.